This is part two of the Thayer School Machine Shop tutorial on basic use of the CNC Prototrack. In the last tutorial, we covered the most basic function of the Prototrack, holes. Now we will cover another one of its features, profiles. Profiles are geometric shapes that the Prototrack can machine automatically. We will cover four kinds of profiles here, standard profiles, pockets, islands, and text. Let's start with one of the standard profiles, a rectangle. I've already loaded a square half-inch piece of stock aluminum into the vise and zeroed it to the top left corner. Again, if you need help with either squaring or centering, see our tutorial on basic mill operations. Erase the current program, if one exists, by returning to the main menu with the Mode key, followed by Edit, Erase Program. Go to your tool table in the Setup menu and add in a quarter-inch mill into the first tool position. Be sure you specify the diameter appropriately, or the profile will be machined incorrectly. To add a rectangular profile event, select the Program menu and go to the beginning of your program. Add an event and select Rectangular Profile. We will now specify the details of the profile. The coordinates x1 and y1 refer to the corners of the rectangle we want the prototrack to begin on. Here we will select 0.5 inches and minus 1 inch for our starting point. The coordinates x3 and y3 refer to the third corner of the rectangle. Since the combination of first and third corners de completely defines a unique rectangle, they are all that the prototrack requires you to specify. Since we want our rectangle to be 3 inches long and 2 inches deep, we know that the third corner will be located at 3.5 and minus 3 inches. However, in the real world, the arithmetic isn't likely to be that easy. The prototrack offers us a chance to skip the arithmetic by specifying the location of the third corner incrementally instead of in absolute terms. For x3 and y3, enter the width and height of the profile respectively, but enter the data with the increment key rather than the absolute key. The conrad, also known as the fillet, refers to the radius of curvature which the prototrack can add to the corners of the profile. Conrads are optional features for this kind of profile, but they will be essential features of any kind of negative pocket or profile. We'll come back to that later. For now, we'll just specify a 0.13 inch conrad and move on. Direction refers to the direction the tool will trace around the profile. This will be determined by the orientation of your tool teeth. In this case, we want the machine to move in a counterclockwise direction. Press 2 on the keypad to specify counterclockwise, and press the absolute key to accept. Now remember, the tool has a diameter. And if the prototrack simply traced out the profile with the tool, it would machine the incorrect shape. Tool offset is the prototrack's way of correcting for this. You can specify the tool to follow either left, right, or center of the rectangle's perimeter. Keep in mind that the terms left and right are defined as facing along the direction of the tool's motion. In this case, since the tool is moving counterclockwise around the profile, we want the tool to be located on the right side of the profile. If we had specified the direction as clockwise, we would specify tool offset on the left. Finish cut specifies the optional amount the machine will leave untouched to be removed in a second pass during a finish cut. Finish cuts are optional features. Pressing enter at this point will indicate to the prototrack that you don't want a finish cut. But we want a nice smooth finish for this part, so let's specify a 100th inch finish cut. Feed rate is the rate in inches per minute that the prototrack will move the tool relative to the workpiece. The proper feed rate depends on a number of factors, including the size of your tool, the depth of the cut, the material of your workpiece, and the speed of the mill. If you need help calculating feed rates, see our tutorial on basic mill operations. I've calculated that a 1.8 inches per minute feed rate is good for this piece. Finish feed rate is the feed rate of the finish cut. Since the finish cut is only taking off a thin layer of material, it can safely be two to three times faster than your rough cut. Here, let's set it to four inches per minute. Finally, select tool one, the quarter inch mill, for your tool number. Your profile is now ready to be machined. Place the quarter inch mill in the machine and make sure it is well clear of the workpiece. Do a trial run to check for errors in the program. If any errors are found, go back into your program and make the appropriate correction. Now it's time to machine the profile. Start the spindle and run the program. When prompted to, set Z, 
plunge the mill into the part down to the correct depth. Press go or tap the black button on the hand clicker. While the prototrack is running, it's a good idea to add cutting fluid or oil to the part. This will keep the part cool and will reduce wear and tear on the tool. Keep the cutter clear of chips and debris with the air blower. If at any time you need to stop the program, just press stop on the prototrack or tap the hand clicker. Be sure to stop the program and clear the tool from the workpiece before you stop the spindle. Now we'll learn how to make pocket profiles. A pocket is the negation of a profile. Instead of specifying a region that the prototrack will cut around, the specified region will be completely excavated by the prototrack. All of the specifications for pockets are identical to standard profiles. However, there is one important factor that you must keep in mind. Recall that a conrad is the radius of curvature which will be cut into the corner of a profile. Now, in normal profiles, this radius can be set to whatever value we want. However, in pockets, the conrad cannot be smaller than the radius of the mill we use to excavate the pocket. It is impossible to mill a truly square interior corner with a mill. Small corners can be made by using smaller and smaller mills, but this means more tool changes, slower feed rates, and more time spent machining. And eventually, a practical limit is reached, where the tool cannot be made smaller without breaking. This is an important factor to keep in mind when designing for manufacture. Since we are using a 1 quarter inch mill to machine the pocket, the radius cannot be smaller than half the diameter of the tool, in this case, 0.125 inches. Now let's look at islands. Islands are a more advanced type of profile. A normal profile excavates a shape, but pays no attention to the material around it. But let's say you want to remove material from around the profile. One example of this would be if you were machining a peg to be inserted into a hole. In this case, we would want to cut an island profile. An island profile is described just like a normal profile, with the addition of four more specifications, the x and y coordinates of the pocket corners. These are the maximum extensions of the excavation. I've specified the maximum extensions of the part here, since I want to remove everything that's not physically part of this profile. One final type of profile that the prototrack can do is text engraving. The prototrack has a built-in function which allows you to input strings of capital letters. To call this function, select the engrave function. The beginning coordinates are the location of the lower left corner of the first character. The height specifies the height of each character in inches. To implement multiple lines of text, multiple engraving events must be encoded with different starting coordinates. The width of the lines used to engrave the text will be the width of the tool, so be sure to select a tool with an appropriate diameter.